Hello and welcome back to Realm of Thrones and we are here right next to Lannisport and Casterly Rock and we have some wonderful vassals that we might be able to target here. Now I have obviously been doing the relatively similar stuff to what you saw in the previous episode where I've just been running around attacking caravans, attacking bandits, basically anyone I could get my hands on. And I did even attack a band of 300 enemy troops. But unfortunately, they did seem to be a little too strong. So because I was the aggressor, um, they actually didn't want to fight. But I was a bit worried about whether I'd actually be able to achieve victory. So I just left. And, um, well, to do that, I dueled the leader, basically. So, so, you know, I dueled the leader and he was honorable enough to allow, you know, um, both of us to go our separate ways with the agreement that, you know, he would, well, give me free passage to go away. And uh, I did end up winning the, the, the duel, obviously, because it was just a very, very swift and easy a... blow to the head, you know, as you might expect. And uh, yeah, so basically that's what's happened. Not much else apart from that. Apart from, oh yes, indeed, the Reach is uh, attacking very, very well. They are doing some great moves right here. And I cannot wait to see what they actually decide to do in this episode as well. Because if we can actually start pushing forward and actually start taking a couple of the Westerlands Thieves... I think we're going to start to see a dramatic swing in the combat strength that is currently available to both factions. Because obviously, you know, one faction is dramatically stronger than the other one. And I would very much like to see a, a huge 180 swing in that because I think that's more fun, obviously. I think that's a lot more fun to see that rather than just having one faction be overwhelmingly strong. I think both of them being around the same combat strength would be pretty much perfect. And then we'll see what we can do because obviously at that point, then we have to decide what we want to go for. Do we want to create our own faction? I think probably we will be doing that at some point. Um, I mean, I mean, that's a funny thing. It could technically be that we'll be creating our faction in this very episode, but I don't have any particular plans on that. There have been a number of series recently, in actual fact, most notably the, uh, the Camel series, where I created my faction out of nowhere. I didn't expect to create my faction, but boom, it just happened. There was no, <laughs> there was no prior planning in that whatsoever, so... It, it may very well be the case that that is going to be a similar thing here. Um, but I don't know. Obviously, some people have said in the comments that the uh, three additional cultures or factions that were added to the game or added to the mod, should we say, they were um, basically supposed to be fiefs that the player would be able to capture and that would be the uh, the starting point shall we say or shall we say the uh, slightly easier starting point for the player than if it were something else i'm going to be taking these squires i think even though the squires themselves are not particularly strong they do already come equipped with mounts i'm obviously going to have to give them um, <laughs> war mounts, I would assume, and uh, you know how how lucky we get with those. So, Stop there, might stranger. be a bit of an issue, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, fact is, as long as we can help out the Reach, then we should be okay. Uh, I am I'm going to take a look and see whether there is actually a nearby fief that we might be able to take. It is unlikely. Because the um, uh, the factions that the um, the mod added were the YT, which obviously is all the way up here. You can see this one right here. That is supposed to be a super, super easy thing to take. And it's supposed to... I'm actually not entirely sure if this was, um, this was scripted or not. But basically, it is not supposed to be attacked by the AI. 
and it is supposed to be attacked just by the player or at the very least it's supposed to remain neutral but obviously the Dothraki uh, declared war against them very early on and they took it so <laughs> that's obviously a no-go situation for us which is uh, somewhat unfortunate but apart from that there is another one somewhere I'm not entirely sure I mean there are another two but I'm not entirely sure where those are um i think there is is it is it down here no that's tyrosh uh no I, i'm not going to be able to ascertain which one it is but there are two others apart from that one um and they are supposed to be super super nice and simple for for the player to capture so that they can create their um, their faction, if you want to create your faction super quickly. Um, but yeah, anyway, as you can see, there have been a couple of swings in regards to the Fief acquisition from the Reach. You can see here that we have another one actually attempting to take Bitter Bridge over there, and I'm very much hoping that maybe uh, Mr. Black Bar over there will also be doing something. And basically, my entire thing right now, my entire purpose has literally just to create some kind of vacuum and by that what I'm talking about is I want to make it so that the enemy has such a difficult time mustering any kind of force because we are consistently beating them down that's basically the only thing that I really want to do here because if we can consistently do that over and over again the reach isn't gonna have to you see and because obviously because the AI is uh, let's just say not exactly the greatest sometimes when it comes to uh, target acquisition and threat assessment and so on most of the time they're just gonna run into whatever and they're probably gonna get themselves killed as a result and that is obviously suboptimal so generally it would be a much better idea if we ourselves, you know, considering I think we have slightly better critical thinking than the AI does. There's Tywin himself. I'm actually going to try and eliminate him. There we go. He's dead. Okay, that was that was much easier than I anticipated. I actually thought to myself, no way, that's Tywin. He's going to have some great armor. But no, he was eliminated just as easily as a paper bag. Well, whatever the case, yes. Anyway, there, there, he, there he goes. You know, there he goes. And uh, yeah, so as I said... Basically, I'm good. I'm just going to try to run as much interference as I possibly can because we have slightly better threat assessment than the AI and we can just make better, more succinct decisions, or at least that's the hope, right? That's the hope. And I'm very much also hoping that I'm not going to be sustaining too many casualties in this battle either. I mean, obviously, that's the point. Sometimes we just have to do it, you know, because personally for me, I don't really want to allow Tywin to just run around wherever and create massive armies that he is going to be able to lead to numerous victories. Because no doubt he's going to be able to do that. I mean, you know, we know him from other, other places. You know, we know him from, uh, you know, A Clash of Kings way back in Warband. We know him from uh, Realm of Thrones in previous series. We know him from all kinds of different places. And he's always proven himself to be a very big pain in our side and so I'm obviously trying to hope my very best here that we can maybe just make it so that he isn't that much of a threat you know and just continue to basically just make sure that he has as lower tier troops as we can make him have and that's it that's all we've that's all that's all my goal is you know just just to try and, you know, target the strongest vassals that the opponent has and trying to remain on top. And that's going to be difficult. Because obviously we're not... <laughs> we're not going to be able to do that forever. You know, we're going to lose troops. And those troops, are obviously, it's going to be very, very difficult for us to, um, you know, maintain as many as we would want. And it's going to be difficult, you know? It's going to be very, very difficult. So anyway, we're just going to... Uh, level up a bunch of those unfortunately my forces yeah as you can see we don't have a huge amount of spaces so I will just have to get rid of some of these guys and the northern heroes they do actually become northern mounted warlords in the end 
this guy can go away. Uh, we can convert one of them to our side. And we'll just get rid of a couple of those. Now, I would love to get the Banner Knight. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to do that. But I'm not entirely sure what to get rid of. I guess we'll just get rid of these. Um, there you go. That's basically all I can do. There's the Guardians of the Rock. There's the Lannister Knights. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that seems to be about it. So apart from that, we obviously do have some really, really good armor here. And I'm actually not using... <laughs> Uh, that's quite funny, actually. I am not using a banner. So why don't I use this? Increases charge damage by 30%. I mean, I think that sounds pretty good. My mount at the moment only has 18 charge damage, which is not exactly amazing. And I would very much prefer to get something better with more charge damage. Because if we take away from this, that, um, well, what's 30%? It's probably like, what, four or five, five damage or something like that. I actually, that's not even entirely bad. That is, that is actually not entirely bad. Considering, you know, charge damage and so on and so forth. If you can do it to earn a, a number of archers in a line consistently, it's going to add up, you know. It's going to add up over time. And it might actually be really, really good. So I'm thinking, hey, you know what, let's just go with that. Now we do obviously have another another person that we want to attack here. I'm going to go for Thunderous Charge as well. Generally, I am going for Thunderous Charge almost every single time. Because I think they, I, personally, I feel like the developers of Bannerlord have nerfed Archery. I think they did nerf it. It feels a lot less powerful than it used to be. And it's funny as well, because I personally disagree with anything that kind of nerfs fun, if you know what I mean. You know, like, for example, I, I really am still very much loathing the new everything has a price, but I'm not going to go into that again. Um, I'm going to spend this focus point on the, on the pole arm here. But for me personally, I would absolutely love if archery would actually, you know, continue to deal as much damage as it used to. Because it used to be that you could just shoot any, um, any attacker as long as you had, you know, decent-ish bow skill. I'm talking about, you know, maybe around 200 or so. I mean, obviously that's on the higher end, but it is possible to get there. Um, you know, it's going to take a while, but, you know, you're going to be able to get there quite quite nicely. And um, it, it should be possible with the best bow in the game to be able to kill most enemies with one headshot. But the new archery, the way that that's working, I, I, as I say, I'm not entirely sure whether they have nerfed it at all, but it feels like it has been affected in some way i don't know maybe it's just me it probably is all things considered it probably is just me anyway if only i wasn't disorganized oh i actually i actually got him oh okay that's absolutely fantastic yeah we're just gonna go in for an auto resolve right here nice and easy just gonna let him go and uh yeah so basically the entire point is that if i am unable to kill an opponent with a headshot from the best bow in the game when I have about 200 or 225 or 250 in archery skill with one hit, headshot, then I think that something is wrong. And I think that needs to be retweaked, uh, just a little bit. Because obviously, if you are putting in that much effort to, you know, level up your archery skill or your trade skill in the, in the case of everything has a price, I think you should be rewarded. You know, I think you should be rewarded with a huge amount of fun and a huge amount of, um, you know, enjoyment and satisfaction because you were able to, you know, stick it out. You were able to put in that effort to level up those those skills and get them to that particular point to actually be like, wow, I, I am looking really good right now. You know, you know what I mean? It's that kind of feeling. Whereas nowadays, eh, maybe not so much. Not so much, unfortunately. It does still actually seem relatively cool, obviously, once you get to a really, really high skill level. And I'm talking about 275, once you have the final perk in a particular thing, then sure, of course, it's going to be very good at that point. But before that, it feels very mediocre, and that's kind of sad. In my opinion, at least. Anyway, we're just going to equip some people with some things. And we're just going to trade all of our loot right now. Absolutely every single thing. 
apart from the weapons, of course, because I am still going to want to level up my smithing skill. And there are 294 pieces of hardwood here, which is absolutely incredible. So first of all, let me just make sure that I'm selling everything that I can here. And then we will be doing a little bit of sorting. What is this? Increased melee damage against mounted troops. Okay, I don't really care about that, actually. I don't really care about that. Okay, so let's just do this. Fish is also way too much. And I'm just going to get some butter and cheese and olives. That sounds good to me. And then we are going to be buying some hardwood as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I've got a lot, actually, right now. But I'm pretty sure we're going to be using almost all of that. But there you go. I got one trade skill point just because I have nothing in trade right now, which is quite funny. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so we've leveled smithing to 121. Hopefully I'll be able to get to 125 in uh, a little bit. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> really? All of that? Literally just to get to... See now, if you think about this, okay. And this is another thing, okay. Uh, I'm not going to go on a super, super hardcore rant here. But did you see what I was at? I was at 121, okay? I was at 121 in smithing. And I have a mod by the name of Better Smithing Continued. There is a link in the description if you want to check it out, as is every single mod that I'm using. But what I want to impart to you right here is that Better Smithing Continued has the, uh, uh, has the ability to remove the stamina cost or to tweak the stamina cost in some way. So what you can technically do is you can make yourself have infinite stamina like I have because for me personally, I do not find the stamina system to be rewarding in the least. Sure, it's realistic to a certain extent because of course, a real life smithy is going to be putting in a huge amount of effort and energy to smelting weapons. Of course, I understand that. However, from my perspective, being a person that makes series uh, you know, about Bannerlord, <laughs> I do not want to wait for 12 hours <laughs> or 8 hours or however long it takes for the stamina to regenerate. And so if you think about this, 121 smithing to 125, and you saw how many weapons I had, and I smelted so many of them, and yet it doesn't feel like it's actually done anything. Is it just me? It doesn't feel like it's done anything. It feels like I just gained four skill points. Only four. Only four skill points. I, I mean, that just doesn't make any sense to me, uh, personally. I, I don't... I, I actually don't understand. That's... Uh, it, it's actually a bit... Um, confusing, because you think to yourself, well, you know, surely this should be amazing, right? Surely this should be super super good you know surely i should have a really really like good time right because i am doing this very specific thing and i am making it so that i am leveling up i i, I should make it that you know that's happening and uh you know it's going to be great but no actually that is not how it goes uh, because you saw there, you saw how little skill I actually gained. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a bit speechless, to be honest, because I never would have expected it. Look, I mean, look at this, okay? Look at how much skill I get from this. Obviously, this is a very low difficulty weapon. I'm not actually trying to get a huge amount of skill, but let's just see how many I have to create for it to give me one skill point. Okay, so we've created five. Okay, ten. Okay, so we created ten weapons let's see again to the next skill point there's there we go oh okay okay we're getting we're getting some good skill points right here okay fine right this is this is a little bit better okay so let me actually just keep let me just keep making these let me just keep making these and see what we can get to okay so we actually got to a relatively decent point okay now let's let's make some more of these and then we'll make some more of these and there we go okay oh now we're actually now we're actually cooking with gas however if you think about how many resources I'm using right here and think about how long it would have taken a normal person without this mod to get this many resources just think about this look at look at how many how many swords I have available for for smelting here 51 87 15 and 7 I mean literally this is 
an insane amount. And yet, this is exactly what we have available here. I mean, look at that. That literally, smelting, smelting 51 just gave me five skill points or whatever it was. What about eight, smelting 87? That gave me seven skill points. So smelting 87 weapons gave me seven skill points. And I feel like that is off. I feel like that is, I feel like the ratio between learning rate and, uh, you know, skill ups, I think is way, way, way off. I think that it should be a lot higher because the way it works right now is extremely punishing to someone that wants to do it the, the old fashioned way. Just imagine what it would be like if I didn't have unlimited, unlimited stamina right now. Just, uh, just imagine this, like I wouldn't be able to do more than this amount of refining. I would literally just be done. That's it. I would have to go and rest. <laughs> uh, and I, that's the point. I don't mind resting. That's fine if you want to do that. But for me personally, I would find that extremely frustrating just because. Um, but now we can actually start creating some weapons that are actually going to be worth something. So for example, if we do this, uh, you'll, you'll get to see here some really, really nice weapons. So if we go and do something like this one, um, there we go. And then we just give it a decent pommel as well. I'm talking about a decent pommel. Something like this is decent, I suppose. And there we go. So now we can actually create this. We're going to create 15 of those. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We need something a little bit more, a little bit more ornate, I think. A little bit more ornate, maybe. Maybe something like this. That looks kind of cool, I guess. And there we go. Okay. So now we can create a huge amount of these. So how many are, look at this. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. Look at that skill up. That's exactly the kind of skill up that you want to see. I actually created a masterwork weapon, if you can believe it. I never would have believed that in a million years, but there you go. I actually did, apparently. And now we're out of, um, now we're out of, uh, you know, out of uh, resources. But we can just smelt this once again, and then we can do even more. Look at that. Boom. And then we can do this once again. And then we can do this once again, and so on and so on. But you wouldn't be able to do that without the mod, as I say. Um, so obviously that's a big deal. Having the ability to not have to rest every so often, which in my opinion, eh, that's the thing, okay. If we were playing a live service game, you know, something like, um, I, I don't know, what, what's a live service game that everyone likes? I don't know. Um, what Fortnite? I, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's the that's the one that comes to mind. I suppose that's the most popular one, isn't it? I don't know. I've never actually played it, but the point is, what do we have there? We've got live service Fortnite, Valorant, League of Legends. Uh, what Dota Two? Uh, what what else? What else is there? Uh, Call of Duty, I suppose. Call of Duty Warzone, something along those lines. And then you you have all of that, and and generally, uh, you know, let, let's just think about um, MMO RPGs as well. And I'm actually I'm not even going to bother with any of this. This doesn't matter to me. But usually, what I would do is I'd probably take practical smelter here rather than practical refiner, because most of the time you're going to be able to refine more than you are able to smelt. Um, and, I, and I'm talking about the actual cost, the actual stamina cost. At least that's what what I've I've seen in the past. Anyway, I'm going to be going for Vigor Attribute because I don't actually have any, um, uh, <laughs> I don't have any ranged weapons, which is quite funny for a Dothraki character, but there you go. Anyway, otherwise we're going to be taking minus 50% trade penalty when selling Smith weapons, and we're also going to be taking a uh, the Master Smith, which is the only, only perk available at this point. Anyway, what I wanted to say is the reason why live service games are making so much money or generally are keeping people playing and so on and so forth is because they they have a lot of different things that you can do. They're very addictive and they provide you with some kind of satisfaction and or they provide you with a sense of you must collect this thing, whatever the thing is, if you know what I mean, right? Because that's, that's how game design works. Because obviously nowadays it's more about that. It's more about keeping people playing the game for as long as possible. That's generally how everything is working actually. Even social media. You know, usually it's all about keeping people using the service as much as you possibly can. So you can serve them more things. You know, so for example, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, you know, Facebook, whatever. All of these places are trying to maintain 
as many people browsing them as possible because that's what you want you know as a as a as a service that provides ads or you know generally just has some kind of thing going on with it that's exactly what's going to happen they want to keep Best. people there and so with live service games they want to keep people playing because they want to they want to make it so that they have um, a sense of you know a sense of like oh yes we're gonna go and do this we're gonna go and do that we're gonna go and collect this item we want to I want to earn that item I want to play this game so that I can earn this for example Diablo 4 there is a battle pass in that game and you buy the battle pass every season if you want to earn those cosmetics right and that's the point if you want to earn those cosmetics you're gonna to have to buy that battle pass and then it's once again one of those things where it's like, well, you're going to have to play this. You're going to have to play this if you want to get that that particular cosmetic or whatever it is. And what I'm what I'm actually getting at here is that this is this is going all the way back to when we were just smithing just now, by the way. And also, why are we at peace with Westerlands now? That is so weird. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why we're at peace with them, but okay. Anyway. I'm just going to finish up talking here and then we're going to declare war against someone else. <laughs> I'm just going to attack someone. I will. I will just attack someone randomly and then we'll just try to get them into a into a battle or something like that. Um, yeah. So in Bannerlord, obviously that's very different because it's not it's not a live service game and it's not supposed to be a live service game, obviously. You know, if it focused more on multiplayer and, and uh, you know, had only a multiplayer um multiplayer component then obviously then it would be more of a live service game and so it would want to keep you in the game as much as possible but in regards to smithing in the single player version of the game it makes no sense that we, that it would want to waste your time in that aspect and i'm talking about obviously the aspect that i i just mentioned where it's just trying to waste your time in regards to waiting for the stamina and sure okay yeah i'm sure some people are gonna say yeah but it's realistic okay fine fine yeah sure if you want to you know if you want to come at me with that particular point okay fine yeah yeah I'll, that's that's okay you know sure it, it is realistic to a point but i still feel like it is out of place sure okay you don't have to you know um you don't have to have infinite stamina or something like that, but you very rarely get an opportunity to um, actually do what you want to do with um, without infinite stamina uh, in in a semblance of good time. Uh, because I, I actually did do a series a long time ago where I had limited stamina. I didn't have better smithing continued because it actually wasn't available at the time or something along those lines. There was something going on with it. And so I didn't have it. And so I was like, oh, okay, I'll just try it without, you know, I'll just try uh, smithing without this particular, um, you know, benefit of the mod. And it went fine. It went okay. Yes, absolutely. But then I also had the mod better time. And better time is absolutely insane like it's a really really amazing time saver in real life time saver that's what i'm talking about it is um it, it is it is possible for you to literally skip entire days basically well not not skip entire days but you can fast forward very 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 quickly and you don't, you're not going to actually have to worry about um, something taking too long or you having to wait for your HP or something like that. So if you just wait in a particular town or something like that, then you're going to be back up to full HP almost instantaneously. And so it's not going to feel like you are, you know, waiting too long or anything like that. We're going to be declaring war against the Westerlands once again, as you can quite clearly tell. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of thing that I was talking about in regards to live service and and so on and that's the reason why I say to you Bannerlord single player is not a live service game so there is really no need for the developers to add in certain mechanics that basically make you spend more time in the game 
And th there's been a lot of times where I've I've thought to myself, why is it like that? Why why did they make it so difficult to level up trade skill, for example? Why is it so difficult to level that up? Why is it not possible for me to earn trade skill with caravans as a passive? So when I'm running caravans that actually make money, I should be getting a small portion of the trade skill gained by the companion. And so on. Those kinds of those kinds of quality of life improvements. I'm not talking about making it insanely easy for me to get 300 trade skill. No, no, of course not. I'm not talking about that because I'm not saying, hey, let me make this game a walk in the park. That's obviously not what I'm attempting to do here. What I'm attempting to do is get some some semblance of balance to the way that things work and level up. You know, because as I've said before, um, roguery skill is okay. I feel like roguery skill is just a huge grind. Um, but if you are going to be taking people prisoner anyway, it's actually not that big a deal. You know, if you're going to just take them prisoner anyway and you have a town nearby and you can take your prisoners to the tavern, sell them there over and over and over again, you're probably going to be leveling up your roguery skill quite quickly and it's not going to level that slowly. Um, but, uh, I mean, there are other ways to obviously level it up, but I'm just, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of it from a base game perspective as well, because otherwise I'd recommend, you know, the Forbury mod, for example, because the Forbury mod is absolutely amazing. It is probably one of the, uh, best alternative character progression mods that I have ever seen, because that is... That is the one that I would recommend if you want a completely different style of gameplay. And I'm talking about absolutely, hugely different. Because at that point, you're taking over towns from the inside. You are, uh, you know, effectively a criminal on the run most of the time. You have a criminal rating. Um, you've got to be careful of guards. You're going to be sneaking into towns all over the place. You're going to be, um, you know, running criminal enterprises. You even have the ability to form assassination squads and actually get people going out and attempting to kill enemy lords. And unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to really do that that often when I when I did my run um, in the Forbury mod because I've actually played it twice now in two different series. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, I never got the opportunity to really do anything super, super, like, dramatic or anything like that. I did have a lot of towns under my control in the various series, though, and they were giving me massive money because, obviously, there's a whole upgrade system in regards to it as well. So you're not only going to be, you know, in man management screens or anything like that. You're not only going to be in the alleyways or anything. No, you've got a whole whole load of different things that you can do with that and so if you want to level up roguery skill well obviously that's the way to go about it but i'm talking base game here because base game obviously is very very different you're not actually going to have forbury available so i'm talking about people on console and i'm talking about people that may just not like mods that much you know there's a number of different different uh, people out there who may want to play a different way which is absolutely fine you may want to play with the complete vanilla experience which is completely up to you, of course. But all I'm saying is, in these cases, why does it take so long to level up? Because at the end of the day, I, I'm not sure if, if, if the regular person is going to want to spend a, uh, a, a, an inordinate amount of time leveling that particular skill. I mean, sure, you know, if you want a long campaign, yeah, sure, go for it, you know, that's that's perfect, you know, that's great. I, I've been a person in the past that has very much enjoyed lengthier, uh, lengthier sort of uh, gameplay loops, because then, you know, in the end, it's going to be very satisfying. But as someone now, uh, you know, more present time, as someone that doesn't have a huge amount of time any further to just, you know, play things and you know long long duration things well that's that's kind of not possible anymore for me but um that's the reason why i kind of comment on this kind of stuff more and i'm kind of thinking to myself well why is it like that 
you know, why is roguery skill so slow? I mean, obviously not for my character at the moment, but I'm talking about in general. Uh, I'm going to be going for more morale from victories because I'm actually carrying, I'm, I'm having some problems with morale at the moment. And I don't really care about bandits being converted into regular troops any further, so we don't need that. And otherwise, we're going to be going for... Uh, hmm, plus one recruitment slot from rural notables. I think that sounds much better because we want to recruit as many noble troops as we can. So that's what we'll go for. Uh, there is another person that actually has a perk, right? Ah, Kriegen actually leveled up. That's fantastic. Okay, uh, I, should, I should probably get him some more scouting skill, all things considered. But he's also a... Tr oh, no, I should get him some more trading skill, shouldn't I? Hmm. Oh, this is a... Uh, this is a terrible character, actually. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Yeah, he's all over the place. He's all over the place with his skills, unfortunately. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that, but... Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, as I say, as my time has obviously um, become quite uh, quite a scarcity, shall we say, uh, those kinds of issues where I just go, well, why is th why, why are these skills taking so long to level up? It, that that, that kind of crops out to me a lot more uh, than it used to. Because... You know, back in the day when I would uh, play a game, I, I wouldn't really care that much about it. I might still be impatient, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, really knowing anything about what I've just talked about, which is obviously live service and, and the fact that people, you know, design games very specifically so that you actually have to remain more in the game. Because nowadays, if I come across some kind of uh some kind of system like that i'll uh i'll decide i'll make a decision at that exact moment i'll be like oh is this actually fun is this actually fun for me and it, it, is it if it's fun or fun enough shall we say then i'll stay then i'll stay and i'll put in i'll put in the time to get whatever that thing is you know wh whatever the thing that i want is I'll put in that time, absolutely. It may take me a long time to get it, but sure, I'll, I'll put in the time because I think that the, the core gameplay loop is enjoyable. But if it's not fun, and even, even if I want the actual thing, whatever that might be, whether it's a perk in this game or a cosmetic in some other game, I don't know, CSGO or Valorant or League of Legends or anything like that, I mean, obviously cosmetics are not really a thing that you can earn in that game as far as I'm aware. I think you have to buy them, but anyway, the fact is, what I'm just trying to say is, if there's something that you want to earn and you're having fun, then I don't see the problem. But if you're not having fun, just purely because it's taking so long to level this thing up, in the case of Bannerlord that is, I'm talking about roguery skill or, or trade skill more specifically, and you just don't really care about the thing at the end of the tunnel, well, then you're just going to stop playing anyway, aren't you? For me personally, I still have fun in the game. I still like the game a huge amount. But it is a case of, why are these things not different, you know? Why can we not change the leveling speed of these things for ourselves? And, you know, all that stuff. Because I'm talking about people on console. I'm talking about people without without mods at all. I'm talking about all that stuff. Because some people just do not want to mod their game. Or cannot. For some reason or another. You know, some there are all kinds of different people that are going to be playing the game. And I just want as many people as possible to have a fun time in it. I'm not talking about making it ma making the game perfect for you know 0.1% of people because that's obviously not the not the goal you know you're trying to make it good for 99.9% .9 of people right that's what I'm trying to get at here so that's the reason why I've said in the past why is it not the case that not we have some sliders for our console friends and just in the base game we have some sliders that literally just allow us to modify whatever we want to modify, customize whatever we want to customize, because it's a single player experience. That's, that's a thing I think that I have to keep reminding people of, because 
this is also a funny thing because it used to be now if you're not someone that used to play on consoles way back when they were you know um, coming out way way back and I'm talking about in the 90s here um, not some of the first consoles obviously but I'm talking about things like the PlayStation 1 and me getting killed instantly by their archers wow they actually did a very good job of killing me right there anyway yeah so what I'm saying is if you remember the PlayStation 1 you remember the PlayStation 2 maybe even the Xbox original if you think about those consoles which are the, the ones that I mostly played on uh, where did it go where you would be able to have cheats and you'd be able to actually have cheats inbuilt into the game itself just as a base so that if you wanted to have fun in a different way then the game would allow you to do that I remember very specifically there was a game by I've, I've mentioned that I've actually mentioned this game before on the channel um, but it is one of my favorite games ever and it's quite funny because this game is so it, it, it would you wouldn't it, i don't know maybe you wouldn't expect me to like this game i don't know but the fact is this game is really quite fantastic and i love it for a variety of reasons but i'm not going to go into those reasons right now all i'm going to say is it's called future cop lapd and this is a, a game about cops in the future. Basically, you are a cop. You are a, uh, a cop in a mech, uh, like a big mech thing. And you can transform from a mech walker into a mech hovercraft. And the hovercraft obviously allows you to go over certain, um, you know, difficult terrain like, like water and, um, you know, stuff like that. It allows you to, to travel faster. So, you know. All that stuff. Yeah, I I don't need you. I don't need to tell you about that. <laughs> I don't need to give you that detail. That doesn't matter. All I'm saying is, this game. If That's you awesome. were so inclined, and if you wanted to just have fun in uh, one of my favorite game modes, I can't actually remember what it's called now. It's a similar game mode to what you might expect to see in a game like Star Wars Battlefront. Um, like uh, it's a conquest mode it's like a conquest mode um, but it's against this AI opponent called Sky Captain and it's very funny because I mean it's not funny uh, I mean maybe it is funny haha in a, in a couple of ways but the main reason why I liked it at the time and you've got to bear in mind that I was very young playing this I was um I don't even know. I don't even know how young I was playing it at this time. I can't remember, but I was young. And I uh, basically what you'd have to do is you'd have to go through the entire campaign, single player campaign of the game to get to a certain point, And then you could unlock uh, this extra game mode and so on and so forth. But this is the reason why I was telling you about the, the whole cheats thing being inbuilt into the game itself you'd be able to enter those cheats and then you'd immediately gain access to the sky captain game mode or the ability to play um, with a specific map which i very much loved and the specific map was where you get you got to play with over, bugs on. instead of mechanical tanks and helicopters and stuff like that so instead of Instead of helicopters and hover ho hover tanks, you would instead have command over um, caterpillars uh, who would like uh, who would basically use slinky uh, slinky movement. So you know those little slinkies that you used to have that would go down stairs and stuff like that. You know those little slinky things. I I can't <laughs> I can't explain it any better than that. I'm sorry, <laughs> but basically they would they would act like slinkies when they were moving around and they would automatically make their way to the enemy base so you'd have those as ground ground units and then you would have butterflies as um as air units instead of the helicopters and i personally thought this was such an amazingly cool concept because they've just completely changed everything about it and obviously sky captain himself he would no longer be this big you know air gunship thing and instead he was this massive dragonfly 
and I just thought it was very, very cool to actually just have this mode. It was such a... <laughs> they, they didn't... Ha the, the developers of the game didn't have to put that in there, but they put that in there because it was just, I guess, fun to do. I don't know. Um, but the point is, you could just skip the entire campaign and you could just play this mode. And that's literally what I did. Every single time I would boot up the game, I, I would enter the cheat and then I would just get into that game mode and I would have an absolutely fantastic time. That would probably be the, the uh, basically 90%, maybe 95% of the time in that game was played in that mode. And you could even play it co-op as well, by the way. You could play the, that game co-op with a friend and or you could play it in a sort of, uh, I think you could play uh, co-op versus Sky Captain. I'm actually not entirely sure if you could play co-op versus Sky Captain, but I know that you could play one versus one in that very same game mode because that game mode would allow you to basically just capture all over the map and you would be, uh, you, you, you basically have to choose your weapon loadout as well. You'd have all kinds of different weapons and things like that as well, which would make a huge difference to your overall effectiveness. And um, yeah, it's a great game. Anyway, the point is, what I'm saying is right now is that back then in the 90s and maybe even the 80s as well, I don't know. I, I don't really have that much experience with 80s games. Suffice it to say. Um, but all I'm saying is back then, cheats were much more widely accepted. And they were more, they were thought of as, oh, that's a fun little thing. And that's it. That was it. That, <laughs> that is literally it. That is all they were thought of. They weren't thought of as this um, kind of shady thing that should never be used ever because people now look down on cheats for some unknown reason. I don't know why, because all intents and purposes, they can make things very fun, you know? And I'm being chased by these guys. I have to be really, really careful about this, actually, because if I if I get myself caught... No, no, no. If I get myself caught right here, I could have some problems. All right, I'm just going to go into the castle. <laughs> Are they literally following me right now? Oh, that is hilarious. Did you see that? They were literally waiting outside. That would have been so funny. Okay, yeah. So anyway, the point is that nowadays, cheats are very much looked down upon as like this really, uh, I don't know, stigmatizing thing. And I don't actually understand why that is. Because as I say, it's literally just a case of, well, I mean, obviously, okay, I'm not, <laughs> let me just clarify this real fast. I'm not talking about multiplayer, okay? Because if I'm talking about multiplayer, obviously, yes, you probably should not cheat in a multiplayer game. Let's face it, that's probably not a good look because you're ruining the experience for pretty much everyone else. And that's obviously not what you want to do. Um, <laughs> but in a single player experience, well, who's it hurting? That's what I'm saying. So that, that's why I say to you right now, why are there no sliders in the options menu? And I, I know that there are going to be some people that are going to be really, really annoyed at me for saying these, these things. But I, I, I just don't understand it. I'm saying it from a very relaxed point of view, by the way. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to be super aggressive with this or anything like that. I am very chilled about that. I'm not... You know, <laughs> I'm not trying to be aggressive with it whatsoever. All I'm saying is, for people that don't have access to mods or anything like that, I feel like being able to tweak basically anything about the game would just make it so much better for everyone involved. And I'm not even just talking about, I'm not even talking about making things easier either. I'm talking about, you can make sliders that make things more difficult to get as well. And that could be something for people that like more difficult gameplay. I'm not only talking about increasing, uh, you know, various, um, you know, uh, various learning rates or various skills. You know, for example, trade skill, roguery skill, and so on. 
I'm not talking about those things only. I'm talking about the fact that you could customize everything in the whole game. So how much you gain from mercenary wages, for example. How much renown you gain. And you could even reduce the amount of renown you gain or reduce the amount of influence. Reduce the, the wages and so on and so forth. So if you wanted to, you could make the experience even more difficult than it is already. You could do anything you wanted to. And that's what I'm saying. It's not a case of just making it easier. It's not a case of just, you know, making, you know, whatever super easily accessible. Because that's the point. Yeah, sure. It definitely has that side effect that you could potentially do that if you wanted to. But it also has the opposite side effect where people that want it to be harder, it, it can be made harder. And I just think that that kind of flexibility overwhelmingly benefits basically every single person. You know, if you've, if you've purchased this game on console, for example, you know, you know the pain that I'm talking about. You know the, the leveling pain that I'm talking about. It is going to take a long time to level up those specific skills. And sure, as I said to you before, maybe you're going to enjoy that process. You know, maybe you're going to be like, oh yeah, that's actually, that was actually really fun to do. That was, that was very satisfying to level up trade skill that time. But, would you want to do it again? That's kind of the question that I suppose you've got to ask in these, in these kinds of situations, because if you wouldn't want to do it again, well, then was it was it that fun? I don't know, because I'm not sure. I, you don't have to answer that question, or you don't have to answer any of the questions that I've posed here. They're all rhetorical, and if you want to join in the discussion or whatever, then by all means, you can. I'm not, I'm not you know, <laughs> I, I'm not ever declining for any kind of discussion here. Just keep it civil, that's all. You know, just keep it nice and friendly, and that's it. That's all we got to do, you know, because it is just video games, after all. It is not a case of us going into battle on our horses and us being mortal nemesis uh, or nemeses shall we say no no we are not mortal nemeses anyway there we go uh that is indeed a nice victory for us right there oh we got some dragonstone shock knights actually not bad and uh let me just let me just say i'm just going to apologize right now as well for going on such a huge tangent but it kind of felt like it was uh somewhat important just to bring that across once again because I kind of feel like that kind of thing is rather crucial and indeed maybe even critical to um, the lifespan of the game because obviously if you think about it from you know mods perspective yeah sure mods can definitely make a huge difference but I don't feel like the entirety of the onus or the, should we say the entire weight of the game's lifespan should be placed on the shoulders of the modding community and making these sliders are it, it, that's just a very small part Yours is of nothing. making it slightly easier to do things and making it slightly easier for the enjoyment factor and satisfaction level of the player base because let's face it some people are just not going to want to spend massive amounts of time leveling up a certain skill because they're just going to get i don't know annoyed bored you know they're just going to think it's tedious or, or whatever and that's the that's the whole reason why i i, uh, I suggest those things you know <laughs> it's not a case of me wanting to make it easier for myself it's a case of me wanting to have more fun with the game that i really like you know, that's that's the whole point. That's the reason why I gave you that analogy, that whole story time about Future Cop LAPD, because that's what I'm talking about. In those kinds of situations, I literally want to be having as much customization as possible. That's the reason why people still play Gary's mod, because there there are just so many ways that you can have fun in that game. I, I've never played the game, so I can't actually comment on that, but I know a lot of people really like it. So there must be a reason. It must be the customizations. It must be, I don't know, the crazy things that can happen in it. I don't know. Anyway, we're taking Hardy Frontline right here because that's going to give me plus 5 HP to troops in our party, which is actually insane if you think about it. The overall value 
that we're going to be getting from that is overwhelming. And I think we're actually going to be ending this episode off here. But as you can see, we're actually not doing too badly in regards to our uh, conquering of various Westerlands fiefs. You can see here that we've actually taken Stony Sept as well. And my, um, my main objective was obviously to play as much skirmish mode, um, you know, warfare that I can actually do. And it seems like it's working quite nicely. And we have advanced to the next clan tier as well. So I now have the ability to uh, field 150 troops total, which is absolutely fantastic. So hopefully um, in the next episode, I will have increased my army size and we will get to 150 max troops. And then we'll be able to run around and fight some more Westerlands people and maybe even take Lannisport. It would absolutely be amazing if we could take that. Um, not sure if it's going to be possible, but I'd love to be able to participate in that siege. And or maybe go into Castle Rock as well, because both of those sieges I think are probably going to be exceptional. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.